These are the tools and parts used in this video to install our rocks, external mirrors with LED turn signal indicators. Drill, Phillips head bit, eighth inch drill bit, three eighths inch drill bit, three sixteenths inch drill bit, round file, pencil, ruler, screwdriver, needle nose pliers, wire crimper and stripper, box cutter, spare wire of any gauge, and a multimeter. If you're installing basic side mirrors, you don't need many of these tools. Before we get too far, let's listen to, you guessed it, our safety jingle. Before you walk on your car, do these safety things before you start. Turn on the car, parking brake down, flip your switch to dome mode, and disconnect your battery. Let's look at the contents of the box. We have two mirrors, four wire splices, and four pan head screws. First, we'll determine the mounting location. I want to stay clear of the rubber windshield clips, so I'm going to mount the mirror just below their clearance. The Sharpie was too fat, so I'd recommend just using a pencil to mark the mounting hole locations. Then I drill using an eighth inch drill bit. If you're mounting mirrors without turn signal indicators, you can stop here and mount using the screws provided. Next, I'm marking the holes for the wires that power the turn signals, which is 3 quarters inch above the bottom hole. Now I'm drilling that hole with the 3 8 inch drill bit and then filing it down using the round file. My front cowl has already been unscrewed from previous videos, so I pulled it off and disconnected the headlights. Hey, this is Paul from Streetwise Carts, and before I let you know that this video is part of our free street legalization mini course available at streetwisecarts.com. Signing up for this course also gives you our downloadable parts buying worksheet. This free mini course is the installation portion of our full street legalization course that goes over all the state paperwork and compliance issues that you need to be aware of when converting your golf cart to a street legal LSV. You can find a link to the free mini course along with a 10% off coupon for a full street legalization course right down below this video. All right, let's jump back in. Now this next part is a bit tricky, but I found a method that works quite well. I start by feeding the wire through the 3 8 inch hole we just drilled. Next, we're gonna pull it through the factory drilled hole for the windshield midway down using a pair of needle nose pliers. Once that's through, we're gonna feed our spare wire upwards through the bottom of the roof strut opening. Pull it out once it reaches the same hole, then twist both wires together and push them through that hole. From the bottom, pull the spare wire down until the mirror wire is fished all the way through. Hooray! Now the mirror can be mounted using Phillips head screws. I'm going to use a zip tie here to secure this wire, then trim it around where it's going to tie into our headlight. This wire is so thin, I need to use a razor blade to strip the wire. I don't know why this cable is so thick, but this wire is so thin. It's pretty disappointing coming from rocks. In order to identify which wire I'm going to tap into for the power, I turn my cart's power on and turn on the turn signal. My cart's headlights are powered by the key switch with a voltage reducer, so disconnecting and reconnecting the batter is not necessary for me here, but might be necessary for you. Using a multimeter, I plug into the green and black wire connector from the headlight and confirm that these are turn signal wires indicated by the flashing 12 volt power. I turn the power back off, and now I can start tapping into these wires. These little wire taps get snapped into the wire and squeezed down with pliers. The inserting wire gets a spade connector crimped on it, although these wires are so incredibly thin, you'll have to triple check that your crimp is secure. They're then inserted into the wire tap. I turned everything back on and tested them out, and they actually didn't work. So I pulled out the multimeter and started troubleshooting. Turns out my turn signal wire wasn't making a good connection, so I had to hit it again with the pliers and it started working. I 
I also had to crimp on a new spade connector because the other one came off. Another reason to have a crimp connector multi-pack handy. Once I had done both sides, I fired everything up and tested it out. Now that I'm done with all the wiring under the hood, I'm going to assemble the side skirts and screw in the dash which secures the cowl in place.